Ian's work can be described as video games that play themselves. So can you sort of walk us through your history of exploring those media and how time behaves differently in them? Yeah, sure. Um, so my first job out of college was working on Industrial Land Magic, which is George Lucas's visual effects studio. And I was at rung zero, um, basically training other VFX artists how to use their proprietary software. But they started doing a lot of motion capture stuff, really innovative stuff to do with like Pirates of the Caribbean. And a certain point came about a year into it where I felt, uh, I mean, it's like in the midst of people who are technically genius and also artistically um, super creative, but they were telling me about the short film that they were being working on or the sculpture project that they'd be working on, and they'd be working on it since Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and this was 2007. And I freaked out, and I thought, I need to essentially take control of my own time again and um, figure out an art practice. So the very first work I made was a motion capture animation, but it became very, 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 very specific where, as you know, anyone who does animation, you can perfect every millisecond of animation forever until someone tells you to stop. And I thought, I can't live that hell again. So I started experimenting with a video game engine that could essentially animate itself. And um, at the same time, I was thinking more and more about artworks that had a sense of aliveness, that had a sense of uh, self-animation, that had a sense that it could surprise me as an author and you as the viewer. And so I began pursuing this simulation path. And for me, that really broke open, um, on a temporal level, the ability to make an artwork that could essentially be of infinite duration and both infinitely boring and surprising in minor interesting ways, um, and kind of escape this uh, hell of being a very linear animator. And you mentioned the word boringness, and that's one thing I've experienced building simulations in, on the engineering side, where there's long stretches of boredom where nothing happens. Is that an artistic problem you have to deal with? Yeah, but I like it. I have a pet corgi, and you know, when I watch him sleep, it's the most mundane, predictable thing you've ever seen. But every little twitch that's a variation of the previous night's twitch is a revelation. And so when you lower the expectation of what counts as interestingness, little revelations become mind-blowing. Um, so it became in this territory. <laughs> 